This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 162, Macronutrient Madness, What's in Your Bucket? by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is the podcast where I read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online, acting as your very own personal narrator. Today's post is from Roger Lawson, again. I read a post from him yesterday, and this one is related, so it seemed like a good idea to read them back to back. If you're new here, I'd recommend checking out yesterday's episode, but it's definitely not required. This post does stand on its own pretty nicely. All right, let's jump right in and start optimizing your life. Macronutrient Madness, What's in Your Bucket? by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. In my last post, read to you in yesterday's episode of Optimal Health Daily, I gave you the rundown on how to roughly calculate your maintenance, fat loss, and muscle gain calorie levels. This is the most important part of the fat loss puzzle. So if you don't have that concept down yet, go back and listen to the Note portion of that episode before you go any further. All right, before we're ready to blast off, we need to do some clowning around. One of my favorite shows to watch when I was lucky enough to catch it was The Bozo the Clown Show. The part of the show that always got me pumped up was the grand prize game. In order to win, the kids simply had to stand in place and successfully throw ping pong balls into a series of buckets that progressively were placed further and further away from him. Despite being deathly afraid of clowns at the time, Bozo was different, most likely because he gave out cool stuff to kids and I secretly hoped he would reach through the TV screen and break me off a piece of that prize action. Sadly, I never got broken off, so I'm here to make sure the same thing never happens to you in regards to your physique goals. Buckets o' fat. What is the purpose of a bucket? To hold stuff. What kind of stuff? In the infamous words of The Rock, it doesn't matter. As long as it can fit into the bucket, the bucket can hold it. If you ever sit by the pale moonlight and ponder life's most vexing question, you'll quickly realize that your body is just one big old living, breathing bucket. There are tall and wide buckets, short and thin buckets, and all sorts of variations in between. But the common denominator here is that they all need constant input in the form of food in order to keep running. While all this is nice and dandy, it also makes the task of achieving your ideal body composition a difficult one at times. Be careful what you put into that bucket of yours. Too much of anything can cause your bucket to grow in ways and places that you want no part of. But put too little of the right things into it and you might as well buy yourself a one-way ticket to Skeletor Island. Plan for success. I'm a big fan of making things only as complex as they need to be. I do this mainly because, in my own experience, I found that the less variables you have to try and manipulate and figure out, the better it is, at least in terms of initially getting started. Having said that, I'm a big fan of basing your current intake on the weight you'd like to be in the future which is a method that I first discovered in Alan Aragon's research review. I'm a fan of this method for several reasons. One, it's super practical. There are methods out there that use your percentage of lean body mass to determine how much of a certain macronutrient you should take in for your specific goal. But the main drawback of this is that there are people who don't have access to a fitness professional who can do tests like skin caliper readings. Even if they do have access, the margin of error between certain body composition methods can be so large that it may not even give you much reliable feedback to begin with, especially if you happen to have a lot of fat to lose. You're also going to have to adjust these numbers based off your results anyway, so don't spend too much time to get too sexy in figuring out your starting point. Two, it's easily applicable. Almost everyone has, at the very least, a slight inkling of the body weight that they're aiming for. And three, All of the number crunching can be done in less than two minutes. And no matter how busy you are, you have that amount of time to do some planning for your success. Get your eat on. Protein, the constant, four calories per gram. For men, if your goal is fat loss or muscle gain, one gram per pound of target body weight. Sexification note. I imagine that women can get away with a bit less protein, like 0.8 grams per pound of body weight, due to higher levels of body fat. But when in doubt, you could always stick with the one gram per pound recommendation. I'd rather someone get a little too much protein than not enough. Example, Raj Law has a target body weight of 185. Therefore, 
he will have an intake of 185 grams of protein, which comes out to 740 calories, 185 times four calories per gram. Fat, the greasy guardian, nine calories per gram. Both sexes, regardless of your goal, should aim for 0.4 to 0.5 grams of fat per pound of target body weight. Example, Raj Law has a target body weight of 185 pounds. Therefore, he will have an intake of between 74 and 93 grams of fat, which comes out to between 666 and 837 calories. Carbohydrate, the underappreciated underdog, four calories per gram. Simply subtract the number of fat and protein calories from your fat loss calorie level that you figured out during my last post. After doing so, divide that number by four to figure out your carbohydrate grams. Example, Raj Law sits on his butt cheeks all day, so he has calculated his fat loss calories by multiplying his target body weight of 185 pounds by nine. 185 pounds times nine is 1,665 calories. 1,665 calories minus 666 calories from fat minus 740 calories from protein, you're left with 259 calories. Now, take that 259 calories and divide by four, and you end up with 65 grams of carbohydrate. This would be an example of a non-training day. On resistance or interval training days, you could experiment with adding an extra 50 to 200 grams of carbohydrates in, mainly around training time. Yep, there is that much individual variability so let your goals and results dictate how much you add in here. If you find that you're putting on the fat too fast, reduce your carbs and fat systematically until you find that sweet spot where you're seeing that scale creep up, but not so quickly that a ton of blubber comes along for the ride. Likewise, if you're not losing fat as quickly as you'd like to be, you can follow the same progression. Just keep in mind that as your calorie levels and carbohydrate intakes drop, your protein requirement increases. If you don't feel like upping your protein, make sure that you get at least 50 grams of carbohydrates a day as their protein sparing effect helps protect your lean muscle mass from being gobbled up in the presence of reduced carbohydrate intake and the large caloric deficit. And now I need to adjust my nerd glasses. You just listened to the post titled Macronutrient Madness, What's in Your Bucket? by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. What I particularly like about Roger's methods here are that it's really simple. It's fairly straightforward. You may not get the math by listening the very first time around, but if you listen to this again, you'll find that, yeah, the math is actually fairly straightforward. It's a lot less complicated than what we as dietitians often have to do. Now, one thing with regards to the protein intake, I've talked about how much protein we really need each day. And usually it's actually less than the one gram per pound of body weight. So chances are most of us that live in the Western world are getting plenty of protein each day. That's usually not the issue. Typically what's going on is that we need to reduce some of our carbohydrate intake and watch the types of fat we're consuming. So yes, we do need fat. I feel like his criteria for determining quantity of fat is perfectly fine. But what's missing here is types of fat. If you just aim to get so many grams of fat per day and you're not paying attention to the types of fat, you may be eating fats that actually may cause harm to your health over the long term. So just focus on foods that are rich in monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, especially omega-3 fatty acids. So these would be foods like nuts, avocado, fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, herring, trout. Those kinds of fish are all great for omega-3s. You can also get omega-3 from algae in case you don't like fish. And so again, I would really focus on what are your carbohydrate portions looking like and are the types of fat you're consuming coming from those quote-unquote healthy fats. Now don't forget, this is your last chance to be in the book raffle happening tonight at midnight. And all you have to do is be a part of our free weekly newsletter. You can enter your email address at oldpodcast.com to join and we'll be giving away a book to a random person on our mailing list at midnight. So make sure you're in before then. You'll also get some free spreadsheet tools from us, a weekly newsletter with some tips and quotes and lots, lots more. You can reply to any of those emails that we send to you to get in touch with us. Again, just come by oldpodcast.com to get all of that for free. 
and do it before midnight tonight if you want to have a chance to win a book. All right, I hope you're having a wonderful week so far. I'll see you on tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.